Hello guys, welcome to the new series of Let's Make Day Z. In this episode, we're just going to do an introduction to the environment that we're going to be developing in. And what we are going to do in this introduction is um, just uh, go over the animations for this character here and just write a simple script to control. Or we're just going to set up the animator and maybe write a simple script just to control um, everything that he will do. So all his animation states and work them out and then the next tutorial we will actually write the character controller so uh, this is going to be the environment we're developing in it's nothing fancy we just have a building here that we're going to be interacting with eventually uh, hopefully be able to climb up this ladder and stuff but uh, for the minute we're just going to start simple with this guy's uh, animations so we are I'm going to provide a package which is going to have everything you see here in it so everything I have you will have except uh, this editor folder which includes my new scene management kit and my hierarchy tools so scene management kit is this scene list that you've probably seen in some of my other tutorials and then my hierarchy tools is uh, just here I can right click and go to Scott's tools and I can create a divider or I can uh, group game objects together so if I select this and this and I do control G, it will group them together for me. No hassle. So it's just something very handy to have um, while doing development stuff just to keep the hierarchy nice and neat. Uh, another, I, I'm pretty sure that's it. There's everything else you'll have here and this environment uh, if you download the uh, uh, package in the description below. So first things first, we're going to click on motion capture character and you can see here we have the animator and his transform and everything and his standard T pose. Now I already put the animations on this guy and the animations can be found in the animations folder and motion capture character and there are all his animations. So here we have idle which is just standing still. <coughs> Similar to Daisy, when you stand still you just kind of stand there, you don't really shuffle around your feet or anything you just stand there and your arms slightly move and stuff uh, jogging so when we press W we're going to be jogging and then when you you then jumping which we will put in with running and jumping so that way you'll be able to get over uh, obstacles like the way you can in Daisy and then motion running which is when you're going to be holding down uh, shift and uh, w so uh, that's pretty much it for the animations now we're just going very simple and then eventually we can add in more animations for when you're pressing w and say d together you get like a strafing animation to the right or a strafing animation to the left just depending on what direction you're going so but that's all the stuff that we can do down the line so for the minute uh we're just going to open up the animator for this guy and this is what it's going to look like for you too. So we're just going to drag. I just like to do things nice and neat. So because there's going to be walking, I think any stay to running or to jumping and then running. So we can go from here to here, from there to there, go from idle to running, and running to idle, and then we can go from running to jogging and jogging to running so that's what this should look like and then we can jump at any point but we can we can change that up um, so what we're going to do is turn off has exit time first so just select each um, just select each uh, what's it transition is, it, is that what it's called make transition yeah just select each transition just on take this box here uh, there we go so that will make sure that it doesn't have to go to the end of the animation cycle before going to the next animation we can just swap quickly between them uh, the first parameter we're going to be doing is a bool and I'd say we'll do walking running uh, idle and then we'll do a trigger for jump right 
So to go from idle to jog, we're going to need three of these. So walking has to be true, running is going to have to be false, and idle is also going to have to be false. In order to go from jogging to idle, we have to put in three parameters. Walking has to be false, idle has to be true, and then running has to be false. Uh, or maybe we could just add two parameters in here. So just idle, true, and walking is false. And then we'll go over here. Walking is true, or this is going to run in. So running is true, walking is false. Then going back here. Uh, walking is true, running is false. And then to go from idle to running. Then we need running is true, idle is false. And we can also take away this running parameter here. We're just going to need this one. So idle will be false, and then to go from here, running is false, and idle has to be true. <coughs> and that completes that whole loop of animations and then we can tweak up the transitions between them so uh, and here we just need to put the trigger for jump so at any point we'd be able to jump and then we can put a delay on how often you can jump so I'm just going to highlight this and drag this over here so that is the animation hooked up so we we'll go back here to our character controller and uh, control character control the name of our script. <coughs> uh, load. I was supposed to change this font because I have a feeling that people just cannot read it. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. <coughs> first things first, we are going to need access to our animator. So I'm just going to do everything private because <coughs> I need Victor uh, and underscore. So access to the animator, and uh, now we're also going to create enum. Private enum animation states. Uh, we're just going to serialize the field. Private animation states and m underscore atoms. So, do, do, do. I think we could do this and avoid fixed update just for the fact to keep everything smooth. Now we can do other things in the proper update. So, for the fixed update, we want to go. To, we're going to fix the animation. So, the different animation states we could possibly have are. So, well, actually, no, we won't do that like that. We will do private animation underscore idle m underscore animator dot set bool idle to true. Uh, and the true running false and walking to false. Okay, so that 
should do our idle animation. Yeah, so, so no matter what, we'll go to idle. Okay, so. Uh, private void animation underscore walking. Uh, we're just going to copy and paste this, just change the values. Oop. So idle has to be false. Running will be false. Walking will be true. Uh, private void animation underscore running. It's in here. Running is true. Idle is false. And I should switch in between them. So, uh, yeah, I might just create just a quick tester. If input dot get key down key code dot alpha one. So alpha one will be animation. Just go idle. Second, sorry about that, just phone calls. Um, so yeah, so right here, we're just gonna do else, no, not else, if it's a different if statement. And if we press alpha two, we want to go to uh, walking, <coughs> and then if we press alpha three, three, whatever. Animation underscore uh, running, and that should do our animations. Up here, we're going to do m underscore animator equals get component animator, and that's pretty much it for now. So come here to our character controller. It's going to drag the animator in just for reference, so. Put that in. Okay, we're all the way over here. So, we're just going to drag the camera over here. Control Shift F to reposition the camera to your view. So, if we press 2, that's going to be our jogging. 3, that's running. Back to 1. We can smooth these animations out, so from jogging to one, running to jogging, we smooth them out slightly. That's not a big deal. Okay, so that's our animations set up. So we will not need this. We will do everything through an enum, so we can idle, we can walk, we can run, and then I'm just going to, I don't know why I copied all this, private void animation underscore jump, and so this will be jumping, I'm just going to copy this one, to type absolutely everything out, uh, Trigger. What is it? Uh, jump. I think it's called jump. Yes, jump. So that will do our jump animation. Uh, that's. Uh, we can test that right here. So we'll put that like that. Then open the animator. Uh, oh, that'd be handy if we made a transition back to idle. <laughs> so what if we go to walking and jump? Okay, perfect. So that is our animation state setup. Uh, 
now what we need to do is create not sure why it's create a function and constantly call it a function it might be tight much neater to do so uh, private void animation underscore check so this will check the animations so if m underscore Adam state is equal equal to animation state dot idle then call animation idle <coughs> uh, what else it's equal to walk walk before walk And now we will just pop this in here, and that will check our animations every frame. Uh, I'm just going to put a region here for animations. Here, so we can just collapse that down then. Don't have to worry about that. So, that is our animations completely set up. So, that is what it looks like. And um, then, when we implement our character controller, we can do a lot more things with it. We can, uh, we can just call these different states or just change the state and it will automatically get updated uh, through here so it's very handy and I'm actually just going to test this uh, state checker really quick so here we have idle walk run back to idle so it works and then when we just call the jump function he will just jump okay so that is it for this tutorial guys uh, i hope you enjoyed it in the next story we'll be actually making this character move and then after that we will be going into survival systems and a lot more stuff that is more survival based and um, for now guys thanks for watching uh, please rate comment and subscribe and i will talk to you guys in the next tutorial peace